Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about uh, template matching, uh, basic template matching uh, using basically methods like uh, uh, normalized cross correlation and so on. And basically, this is where you have a template and you slide it all over positions in the source image. And then you try to find a relation between the template and the portion of the source image that the template is over and has the same size as the template. So compare pixels against pixels and see which one of those positions gives you the minimum or the maximum uh, basically measure, whether it's a difference, you want the minimum. If it's like a dot product or a correlation, you want the maximum. And uh, then you find the location of that template in the image clearly. Uh, since you only move the template and not rotate it or anything. So if the template is rotated or the source image is rotated or it's scaled or skewed, this method or these methods that we're going to talk about, this, this specific one like normalized classical correlation, cannot find your template, okay? This is only if a pure displacement has happened without anything else. And because you go over so many uh, positions and do all this pixel by pixel comparison, these methods are very time consuming. So in reality, uh, we'll do some other methods uh, for finding some specific points called feature points, and then matching those. And from those, we find the locations and all other sorts of transformations like rotation, scaling, and so on that has happened to the template or to the source image. And that is the topic of another video that I'm going to soon publish. So here uh, we need CV2, we need NumPy, and we need matplotlib. Uh, so here I'm going to import image Lena, and then I'm going to import a template, which is a part of the image Lena, mostly her eyes and nose. And then I'm going to uh, locate this template within the major image. And uh, for that here, uh, I'm going to, let me get, I changed some of this stuff for experimenting, but I guess I should go back. So there are six methods for comparison of the template to a portion of the image. And these are their names. So we have CV2 TM underscore C, C O E F F or COF, basically TM underscore C COF normed, then TM C core, and then C core normed and then TM SQ diff, right? Square diff and then a square diff normed, right? So there are six of them. And if you want explanations, go to this link and here you can see what it is doing. So in this simple one, it's the square of the differences. You subtract the template pixels from the corresponding uh, source image pixels, you square them and sum them up. So clearly you're looking for the minimum, the location in the source image that this guy goes to a minimum. And then uh, to normalize it with respect to the intensity of the pixels in the template and in the source image, what you can do is divide this guy that you have by the square root where this square root has some of the square of the intensities in the template image and in the source image and this is the normed sum of the uh, square differences right so this is uh, the template matching square differences normed and again here you're looking for a minimum then we have here c core which should be cross correlation and here i'm doing a dot product between them so this is maximum when they are the same right or very similar so here I'm looking for a maximum of that. And then I can, again, divide this entity by the magnitudes of these uh, pixels squared under the square root multiplied together. So this is the cross correlation normed, normalized. And then the other one is uh, basically a simple uh, cross correlation, right, as you can see. And uh, this is very simple. Again, you try to maximize it. And then uh, we have this one here that is kind of similar to this one, right? As you can see, uh, the measures are quite a bit similar. 
and this is called CQF normed and this guy is called C core normed okay so this is a cross correlation coefficient norm that's just cross correlation but in this uh, first two you are trying to find the minimum and the next four you are trying to find the maximum the place that the maximum of that measure is happening so uh, here the method I'm going to use is the square differences normed it's the second one and uh, it's this guy, which is very common in template matching. And I want to look for the locations where this guy goes to min. So what I'll do is the method is defined for template matching. I use the method called CV2 match template. I pass to it the image, the template, and the method. And it gives me a result. And this result is a matrix that has all of those uh, square difference normalized values stored in it. So here, I use the command cv2 min max loc, location or locator, and I pass the rest to it. And that is going to give me min value, max value, min location, and max location. And the thing that I care about is min location, as I said. So I say min location is going to be the top left of corner of my image. And then the bottom right corner is going to be the top left plus the width of the template that I already got from the shape command. And then the uh, other dimension of it is the top left dimension uh, index 1 or dimension 2 plus the height of the template, right? So this is going to be basically what the top left and the bottom right places in the source image, in the major image that the template has been placed on and it yielded the minimum value of squared difference normalized. Okay, some square differences normalized. That is the place of the best match. So now that I know it, I'm going to add a rectangle to my image with the two corners, top left and bottom right, and I make it color white and two pixels. And then, in these three subplots, I'm going to show you what. First, I show you the template. Then, I'm going to show you the result matrix, right? Those sum squared difference normalized. And then, I show you the image where the uh, best location is shown by a white rectangle added on the top of that. Okay? So, before I go to the next part here, let's go ahead and run this code. And here we go. This is the this is the source image. This is the template, the portion of it. And as you can see, it found it very accurately. And this is that matrix of some square differences normalized. And you see here that almost at probably this location right here, I have a minimum. And here, of course, this image is a little bit bigger than that. So if you bring the size back to this, this corner is probably matching this location over here. So this is where the minimum is happening, and this is where the template should be located. And you see here, this template, I got it directly cropped out of this picture, so it is working just fine. Now, if I go ahead and rotate this and try to find a rotated version of that in this, you are not going to do a nice... Um, basically positioning okay you cannot do it because the pixel values will change drastically because of rotation so this method is only working for a simple pure translation now uh, sometimes you have more than one match for the template. for example here I have a Mario image Okay, and then uh, I have one of the gold coins that Mario is trying to catch. And there are several of these gold coins in the Mario. Let me show you that first, and then uh, I'll explain the code. Let me show you the result. So here you're trying to find one object that has so many matches in the picture. So here, this is the zoomed version of one of the gold coins in this picture from Mario, Super Mario. And so, there are so many matches for it. 
So how can I find more than one match, right? Because you see that I have so many matches and this is that matrix and all of these dark points are the minimum locations. Now, of course, the Mario itself is not so close to them. So this is not like one of the top ones. Right, but uh, how do I uh, locate all of these in uh, the image? So this is what we do. The first part is the same. This is template matching. I pass the image, I pass template, I do the method. The method is the same as this one. I have not changed it yet. And by the way, one important thing I have to mention here is these are working on grayscale images and it's better to be grayscale, right, instead of color images. Not that the color images don't work, but we better do it here in uh, grayscale to make it faster. And here I apply a threshold. And I say, find where in this result, where the numbers are less than this threshold. Remember, I'm looking for minimums. So I'm looking for anywhere that the numbers are below 0.1. Find those locations and then in those locations, wherever you find them, for any point in those locations, go ahead and use that point as the top left corner, and then this coordinate as the bottom right corner, and then a uh, red color here, and two pixels, and draw a rectangle with those specs, on the original image and assign it back to itself so when i show this original image it has a lot of red uh, rectangles added on all of the matches so all of those points all of those rectangles are where the value is below 0.1 now of course if you change this threshold right if you make it a little bit too big you're going to find a bunch of false detections probably and if you make it too small, then you're going to lose some of these. Okay, so it's a tuning thing. And I can go ahead and make this like 0.4 and see what happens. You see, so now Mario is also included. Because <laughs> Mario is not super close to the gold, but clearly better than the black background or this green area or anything. Okay. And if I make it small, so I make it 0.05, right, instead of 0.1 or 0.02 or 0.04, something like that, then I'm going to lose some of those gold coins. You see? So these guys are now lost because they have a little bit change compared to uh, those ones on the top. And although they look very similar, probably very, very small changes maybe a little bit of rotation or something, and it is going to lose those. Okay, so uh, this uh, threshold is going to determine what to keep and what to not keep. But the idea is the same, and here I'm using a for loop and goes over each and every one of the points in the minimum, and here I'm not using a minimum, I'm using the points that are below the threshold. So I'm using the minimum and everything above minimum that is below this threshold. I keep all of them. And then since I have a bunch of locations now, I'm going to go in all of them. Here, this zip is going to tell you to go in all of those. And then what? And then uh, you're going to add all of those rectangles. And for those of you who are a little bit more curious about the zip and this star and so on, what are these? Here I added some extra explanations, although this is a little bit more advanced topic and maybe I can make a video about it later. But the zip command basically takes the iterables, right, and as arguments, especially with this star, as you can see here. And then it returns an iterator, and this iterator is going to go over all of the values in it and basically returns to you these iterators that you can use here as the top left corner location of your rectangle. And the good thing about it is it can accept any type of iterable, such as files, lists, tuples, dictionaries, and so on and so forth. 
Okay, so uh, if you are curious about it, you can look it up, but my goal is not to talk about the zip command here. Just wanted to tell you. The other thing I thought you might ask is what is this dot shape and then a column, column, negative one. So this is gonna reverse the order of values in the dot shape. Okay, so if the template dot shape is height and weight, when you do negative one, it's gonna be weight, width and height, not height and width. Okay, so that if, as I said again, if this shape is returning something like um, five twelve by four hundred, let's say. Right, if this is dot shape, when I say dot shape and then this column, column negative one, it is gonna make it like 400 and 512. Okay, so it reverses it so it can properly assign it to width and height. Otherwise, I have to say height and width, but it's, it's not a big deal. I could just go with shape and make this height and width instead of width and height. So just wanted to add that explanation for you so you know the meaning of each part of the code. So hopefully this video was useful to you and you learned how to perform a basic template matching with pure translation of the template within the source image. In my next video, I'm going to talk about the uh, feature point detection and finding templates in the big image if there is more transformation done to the template like rotation, scaling, skew, and so on. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.